Welcome to a jam-packed racing to win. Lots coming up on the show. A couple of special guests, including Blake Shin and Sam Agars. Paul and Nick join us, but the focus is all about the second leg, the four-year-old series, the Classic Cup. Ready for the Classic Cup. Sunny Singh, he won the Classic Cup from Sword Point. The road to the Derby continues at Sha Tin on Sunday and uh, the boys are in the studio. Paul Lally and Nick Child and Nick Helios Express looking to make it the four-year-old series double at this stage. Yeah, he certainly is, Mark. Look, it's a cracking race, isn't it? And he's a very, very good horse. He was uh, superior uh, in, the, uh, in the first leg and uh, I think he can do the same again this time round. So looking forward to seeing him in action. We'll profile him very, very shortly. Paul Lally joins us. Any jackpots this week? No, there's no jackpots. A uh, host of first starters, though, so plenty of horses uh, have come here to this jurisdiction for the first time and I think the racing will speak for itself because it's a really good undercard as well and that uh, 2000 metre race is a few derby hopes in that as well trying to just go a different route. There is indeed. A couple of all-weather races too as we have a look at the meeting details for this uh, big day coming up with eight on the turf and two on the order. B plus two of course and up to meeting number 51 of the season. Despite the fact as Paul said it is an excellent undercard we're just going to focus on the Hong Kong Classic Cup on the show. Race number seven at 4.05 local time. Helios Express has his first try at 1800 metres. Elaine feeling cheek pieces off, blinkers go on. Jill Chibi makes his Sha Tin day Boo ensued. We haven't seen him since the 21st of January when second behind Natural Storm. Beauty Crescent has the blinkers coming off. Cheng Cheng Glory goes to the 1800 for the first time. Elliptical Blake Shin back in town to ride him. Fallon's won two from his last three and Star Mac cheek pieces off and the blinkers go on. Big full field of 14 here Nick along the back straight from the 1800 metre start point. Yeah so long run into that first turn of course and obviously you know speed and positioning is going to be crucial nevertheless and uh, Cheng Cheng Glory we know he can lead. He's drawn 13 so Keegan DeMello might just uh, give him a, a kick in the belly and, and go forward with him. Simply Maverick I don't think we too far away. Helene Feeling, uh, he's drawn well. Now he's in one, so that does give Zach options there uh, to get into a very nice spot. Speed, Dragon and Jet. Well, Helios Express, the, the likely favourite and perhaps the one they've all got to beat Paul. He was close enough last time out and won impressively. I think we'll make it a bit of the same. Yeah, look, he, he should get a really good run and Speed Dragon was unlucky in that same race. I think he's going to get a nice run. I think everyone will get their opportunities because Chang Chen Glory does like to roll along in front. So that's the look at the speed map, Nick. As far as previous winners of the race go, Super Sunny Singh victorious last year. Yes, and, and a winner recently as well. So he's certainly carried that form forward uh, in 12 months, hasn't he? Yeah, Golden 60, of course, on that list. California Spangle obviously backed it up with, uh, with a win on the international day as well. So some good horses have won it, Paul. Yeah, it's a mixture, actually, because you've got, you get a few outsiders and you get some horses which are really synonymous here with uh, Hong Kong racing, like Ambitious Dragon Designs on Rome and Rapid Dragon. Will it be Helios Express who adds his name to this year's Classic Cup on a roll? It's fair to say that Helios Express has made quite an impact since arriving in Hong Kong. After a comfortable debut win over 1106 metres in Victoria, Australia, Tex-Mex, as he was known then, was quickly snapped up and sent to John Size. Tex-Mex gets to the speedy Tapo, goes past it, and this is gonna be a brilliant debut by Tex-Mex. The son of Toronado was impressive at Chartin on debut last June, running home strongly to finish second behind Golden Empire. And he wouldn't have to wait long for his first win. Later that month, he demolished a Class 3 field. Oh, the favourite's going way too good for the others. He's run to the front from Tomodachi Kokoro, and then came Module Construction, but his four for Purden, that one's easy. He would end last season in July with another win under Zach Purton before he was put away by size for a four-month break from racing. Starting his season in November, he won first up over 1,200 metres before being beaten by subsequent Group 3 winner Taj Dragon over 1,400. A step up to the mile then paid dividends and he's won his last two races over the distance, including a Class 2 and, most recently, the first leg of the four-year-old Classic Series, the Hong Kong Classic Mile. 
Helios Express has taken over though. He's raced a length clear over Helene Feeling. Ching Ching Glory. Star Mac runs on through the centre. He'll get into minor money, but the favourite way too good. He's likely to start the Classic Cup as favourite on Sunday, and according to jockey Hugh Bowman, the key to success will be getting him to relax. He's got that beautiful tactical speed, but I, I, it's just important that he just really does relax. I'd like to see him relax a little better than he did in the mile for, for the 1800 and, and looking forward to, to a derby as well. So, you know, he, although he's, there's no question he's the best horse in the race and he's got a class advantage, it, it is still important that he just does things right, switches off and gets in that rhythm. And if he does that, uh, he, he'll be too good for them. But if he doesn't do it and, you know, wastes energy in the run and, you know, over races, which is, which is a possibility, um, then he, he's going to find it tougher as he gets over the longer trips. There is Hugh Bowman. Paul, here is his report card, Helios Express. It makes for impressive reading. Oh, look, he's, he's been very good here in Hong Kong since he's arrived. And as you can see, five wins from the seven starts, the second and the third speaks for itself. But he is stepping up to the 1,800 metres. Yeah, look, and you know, he, he's still, I think, a horse who's is learning his craft. We haven't seen him all that often, but what we have seen has been very good. Here is the uh, classic mile now, last time, Nick. As we heard from Hugh, he did get keen in this race. He was given a perfect trip. If he gets to 1,800 metres and settles, is there anything out of the classic mile in particular that can trouble him this week? I think uh, I think Star Mac is uh, is a very interesting horse um, in this. Obviously, blinkers are going on him for the first time. Some more on him, obviously, shortly. But uh, his run was very good, I thought, in defeat. But look, he's sort of he's sort of bossed this race a bit, hasn't he? And the fact he's off a, a triple figure rating, he's the only one in this race currently at 102. He does he does set the standard. Obviously, the horse that's run second to him there, Paul Helene Feeling, is obviously very talented. And another one getting blinkers on first time as well. But uh, you know, this guy's certainly the one they've all got to beat again. Oh, definitely, no no question. Look, the other horse is a beauty crescent here because the blinkers come off him. It's the opposite with him, and he did over race a little bit and in, in, in earlier in, in the race. So with the blinkers off, look, he really attacked the line well here. So I, look, I, quite, I was quite impressed with his run in this. Oh, he does draw wide beauty crescent, but they do get uh, about a 900 metre under the first turn. And there is the head on Paul as Helios Express gets out. Yeah, you can see once he got out, he, he hit the line in, in one well. Now, there wasn't much luck there for Speed Dragon, and he was a little bit unlucky. Uh, we're not sure how close he would have got, but um, you can see what I mean about that beauty crescent running off. Yeah, j just with him. I mean, his wins in Ireland were over sprint trips, and he is going up a trip. I, I had slight reservations with the distance, but on that evidence... If he can bring that forward up over another furlong, then yes, he's interesting. Mm. Mikhail Barcelona in town to ride Speed Dragon. John Size, of course, not only represented by Helios Express, he also has ensued in the race. He'll be partnered by Ryan Moore. Nick spoke to the master trainer about the chances of ensued. Talking of jockeys, John, the, uh, the call was made to, to Ryan Moore um, a little while ago, obviously for ensued. He's going to join Helios Express. He has done a lot in a short space of time, this horse. How, how impressed have you been with Insured so far? Well, he's, he's been uh, uh, quite unusual the way he came into Hong Kong and, and won immediately at a, at a distance. That doesn't happen too often. So um, he's sort of stamped himself as one who's adapted to Hong Kong quickly. He certainly can stay. That doesn't seem to be an issue with him. Just a little bit one paced is probably uh, the chink in his armour. He doesn't have much acceleration. But um, with that, um, as long as he's in a forward position and running freely, that's about probably the best we can do. He is a horse, John, who likes his trips up to Chung Fa, clearly. Had a trial there, did win it. Um, he looked good in the trial. Yeah, he's had two trials since he raced uh, at Chung Fa, and, and both times uh, he looked normal. He, he seems to be enjoying his work and uh, he seems to uh, you know, continue to, to do well. Is he sort of the horse from your stable that maybe you're considering more for a derby, given your comments that he is probably that bit one pace and he is already a 2,000 metre winner? Well, no, the, my early thoughts would have been that he wouldn't have the, the class for, for that, but he, because he runs a distance, he's gone up in rating um, reasonably slowly because his winning margins have been small. But... Um, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's done really well, so um, I'm certainly happy to have him on board. Yeah, obviously Ryan and you have, have some history, obviously, in this race and derbies, etc. You've won this race four times, John, so um, good record in the race. It'd um, be nice to win it again. Yeah, certainly it would. We'd, we'd like to win every race, but 
Um, yeah, that's an, an interesting um, thing that's happened. But, um, yeah, we've got a chance. You never know. We might get another one. There he is, John Size talking in Sue. There's a, an extended version of that interview on the Race by Race preview, hkjc.com. Click on audio and video. Looking at John's runners, Nick, after we see his stats for the season so far, 34 wins and a stack of placings. Yeah, look, the, you know, the, traditionally, obviously, John needs no introduction um, at all to, uh, to Hong Kong racing and racing fans alike. And, you know, he's having a, a decent season. And I just feel now there could be a bit of pressure put on Pierre Rung towards the end of the season because John's horses are, are finding form and he's introducing some nice young ones Paul. No he definitely is and uh, yeah the trainers premiership should uh, hot up in the last uh, quarter of the season for sure. Now looking at his rides, uh, his ri uh, uh, he used to ride actually but looking at his charges here obviously Helios Express is the main one on that page. Toronado Phantom's well rated at his best as well and uh, must go. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't run too badly at his last start. He didn't at all. Um, Ping Hai Galaxy, the old boy in as well. Simple Hedge is another one of, uh, of Ryan's mounts. A magnificent nine. Uh, don't discount him. I know he was beaten last time as favourite, but he, he's a, an interesting horse. He is indeed. We've got guests coming up before and after the break, but on the way to the break, the racing editor from the South China Morning Post joined us earlier, Sam Agars, to see whether the 1800 was going to stretch Helios Express. How are you, Mark? Yeah, look, it looks pretty pretty ideal for him, I think, the way it's going to set up for him on Sunday. Um, look, out of gate two, I think Huey can give him the perfect run. And um, even if there isn't a lot of speed, which can often be the case in these 1,800-metre races, I think, uh, look, I think he, he'll be there to strike at the end and he's going to be very, very hard to beat. All right, so is he the horse you are tipping? And if he is the one, it's a race that's had some rough results over the years. Who could be a blowout in the Sam Agar's book? Yeah, it's a good question. I was just having a look back. Obviously, Mission Tycoon won at $92 not that long ago and uh, Healthy Happy at something like 22s. And they both did it from the front. So maybe we go for a horse like Chan Chen Glory if we, if we are looking for a blowout. Welcome back to Racing to Win. This is the Classic Cup preview show. But before we go any further and joined by our special guest, it is last run reminder time. Gather round, kiddies. Uncle Paul has a story to tell you. <laughs> Race 10, number six here. Superb Kid is uh, the horse that uh, we're looking at here. Now, it was a very good run from him uh, for second at his last start. You can see he was Drew Barry number 11, so he had to uh, go all the way back. He, he's drawn a little bit better on barrier eight. Now, the, the time was basically dead on standard there, just point one of a second, but he came really wide in the turn. Uh, and uh, look, a lot of his rivals were in this race, and he meets them at uh, similar weights. He's got Blue Marlin there. He's also got Magnificent Nine. And I just like the way once he got into this clear, and he really finished off strongly. Now, Giddy up that won the race. He got the first run on him on the inside, but uh, previous is he had won. He's put two races together now. And I think he's ready to win once again. So superb kid in race 10, number six for me. And that is the last run reminder from Paul for this week. Superb kid. We now move on to our special guest and friend of Hong Kong Racing. Great to have him back in town this weekend. Blake Shin, welcome back to Racing to Win. Thanks, Mark. Uh, great, to, great to see you and be on the show again. You're back up riding plenty for Casper, but uh, the main ride is elliptical in the Classic Cup. You've ridden him in Australia plenty of times and had good success on him. How did it come about that you're here to ride him this weekend? Um, I was approached by Casper uh, after his last um, last effort in Hong Kong um, and asked me to come up and ride the horse in this particular race. And uh, obviously I've got a long-standing relationship with Cas. And uh, once he asked me, I was more than happy to... Um, come and ride him for him and, and the connections. He hasn't been as strong in Hong Kong as what he'd shown in Australia. Is it might be a case of just taking a little while to get used to the racing up here and the fact that you have the relationship with the horse that he can turn that form around this week? Look, I hope so. Um, you know, prior to his last run, he was only getting beat sort of three and a half lengths, four lengths and building towards something. His last run, obviously there was excuses with sort of mucus in, in his trachea. Um, and the blinkers were applied for the first time at his last run, and I know he's a far superior horse with blinkers on. So if we put a line through his, his last run, uh, I thought that trial that we're watching now was was um, quite respectable. Um, you know, if, if he can return to some of his Australian form, um, 
you know, he hopefully he can show something and, and you know, being on track for a derby on um, on the weekend, after the weekend. You're drawn barrier number nine from the 1800 metre start point. It's it's a great start point at Shard 10. In Australia, what was his normal racing pattern? Is it similar to what we've seen from him here in Hong Kong? Not necessarily. Um, I think he can show a little bit more tactical versatility that he that um, that he's shown in Hong Kong. Um, in the Caulfield Guineas, he was three back defence, and then in um, the Spring Champions Stakes in Sydney, he was box seat. So he can race handy if um, necessary. So, look, he's drawn barrier nine, which is not ideal on um, on Sunday, but not having a proper study of the race just yet. But I'll go through the field and have a good chat to Casper. But look, he. He has got tactical speed if we want to use it, um, but that's that's up to Casper and how he wants me to ride him on, on Sunday. He's looked after you too, Casper, on Sunday. You've got plenty of rides for him and you must be looking forward to putting those sky colours back on. You had such success in them on your great mate Skyfield. Yes, 100%. Great to be wearing them colours again um, for, for Skyfield's connections. Um, yeah, like you say, Casper's really looked after me. He's put me on some great chances on, on Sunday and looked all the horses are prepped up, prepped up nicely. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get a winner or two on, on Sunday. It'd be great to return back to Hong Kong and, and hit the board. And since you have left Hong Kong, it's been nothing but strength to strength for you in Victoria. You've been absolutely flying in Australia. So it has been a good move for you. Yeah, look, Melbourne, Melbourne has been a, a great move. Um, winning the premiership and, and, you know, you know, just doing really well. So, um, you know, the decision to return home back to Victoria has been fruitful and, uh, you know, couldn't be happy here, here at the moment. But, uh, like, always happy to return to Hong Kong for the, for the right rides and um, hopefully it can be a, a good, good return on Sunday, mate. Would you like to come back perhaps for another stint at some stage or the perfect option is fly in, fly out at the moment? Oh, uh, look, yes, definitely. Um, you know, I've been asked to come back whilst I've been in Australia. But, you know, when I made that decision to come home, I think it's important for, for the connections to just build a bit of continuity and, and show the you know, Australian trainers and connections that, um, you know, that, that I'm back there for a bit. And uh, I didn't want to be flying, flying back and forward. Um, I, I wanted to cement myself for a few years before I um, did a stint back abroad. Um, in a place like Hong Kong, but um, look, I, I do love riding in Hong Kong and the door's always there to come back. And I think at some stage I'll definitely be back for, for a stint. But uh, at the moment, everything's going well in Australia and I've got great support. But uh, yeah, one, one day you'll, you'll see me back there. Um, yeah, back there riding for sure. And we'll see you even closer this Sunday. Blake, thanks for joining us on Racing to Win. Great to catch up and a good luck at Sha Tin this coming weekend. Thanks, Mark. Be good to see you all. Cheers. Big thanks once again to Blake for joining us on this episode of Racing to Win. Back to the boys we go to talk about some of the other runners outside of Helios Express and ensued. And this is a recent trial, Nick, with a number of runners in the Classic Cup. Helene Feeling, as he always does, he trolled really well. He did, yeah. No, absolutely he did. And, um, you know, he's a very talented horse, isn't he, this guy? And um, for all, you know, he was showing all that early form around Happy Valley. He's obviously brought some good form, notably last uh, last time out to Charlton. But a uh, really good trial, this. Um, you sort of had to be impressed by it for sure. And uh, obviously a number of others in the trial as well here, Paul, who have gone OK. Yeah, they have. And look, Blink is on him for the first time over the 1,800 metres inside draw. So he's going to get all the favours. That was trial number one on the 22nd of February. Trial number two was not as strong a field as the first trial, but Star Mac Paul was about four lengths beside, behind the second last horse going down the back straight. This is what he did in the home straight. Yeah, and again, he's got blinkers on for the first time. You can see him, he was really asked to stretch out, and he did. To be fair, the other horses weren't being pushed, as you said, and he did what he had to do. He won the trial nicely. He's got to overcome this rating of 69, but... Um, you know, you, you, they're looking at the future for him. Yeah, and look, his trainer, David Hayes, has always been you know, very confident that he's a bit better than this. And um, he's third in the mile at 45 to 1. I don't think it was any fluke at all. 
One of the unknown factors in the race, Nick, is Chil Chibi. He's never been to Sha Tin before. On the positive, he has won over 1,800 metres. This is his last start at Happy Valley where he finished third back in January. Yeah, do, do you know, and I feel that obviously there would have been many out of this race disappointed with him, but I don't think you can be really when you sort of boil it down. Look, I, he's a type of horse, I think he um, he just probably wants this trip now. This was 1650 and he's, he's run on again, as you can see, and... You know, he's chased some pretty handy ones as well in the process. So, look, I wasn't too disappointed by that, but first one at Chartin is interesting. Yeah, that's that's the query. He's, he's up against the big boys first time at Chartin. Kaying generation, Paul. This is him scoring last time. This is early in February over the 2,000 metres, so the trip's going to be no problem coming back to 1,800 metres. Is he up to this class, though? Well, this is the query. I mean, he had the race run to absolute suit here because they went nuts in front here, and uh, he, he finished off strongly and, and won the race. So... Look, he's by Churchill. Um, we've seen those horses stay here in the past. Uh, barrier number four for him, he'll get his opportunity. Whether he's good enough, I'm not so sure. I, I've left him out. Yeah, look, I, I couldn't find a spot for him. Um, I respect that he's clearly an improving horse, and I like the way he toughed it out there. But uh, this is much tougher. And as for the other two that were further down the field, I'm, I'm finding it very hard to make a strong case for them. Yeah, fair call on uh, those ones. What about Simply Maverick? Nick, this was his best performance at Shard 10. It was his first try at 1,800 metres. He was eventually beaten, but he brought some very strong Happy Valley form to this race. Yeah, look, he was beaten by you know a tough as teak little horse in the shape of uh, of Packing Hurricane. So there's no um, there's no shame to be taken out of that at all. And um, you know it was good to see him bring uh, his good Happy Valley form to Chartin because he hadn't done it in three starts previously. So this was most definitely a positive and a step in the right direction. And Damien Lane's flying in for the ride as well, Paul. So very interesting. No, definitely. And I, I like the way he he sort of stayed on there by Sebring. So the 1800, even up to the 2000s probably going to be better for him. This is one of your favourite stats, Paul, the prices of the previous winners of the Classic Cup. Yes, yeah, so the two favourites have won it the last couple of years, but you look at in between there, Healthy Epi 22, Mission Tycoon 92, 126, it has to be you as well, and prior to that, Outsiders. So it, it froze up a mixed bag. It does, it does indeed, but always a good race. It is indeed. Does the favourite make it three winning years in a row? Could well do, but I think he's going to be really short. He'll be odds on, I think, in this race and be over bet. So I've, I've gone outside him. I've looked for a bit of value. I've gone for the horse by acclamation here, Beauty Crescent. He's on top each way to beat Helos Express, Helene Feeling and Simply Maverick. Yeah, I've gone with the uh, the top uh, the top saddle cloth here, number one, Helios Express. I think he's the one they've got to beat, but uh, there is some good opposition to him. Uh, Helene Feeling in for second, ensued, goes in for third, and uh, Starmac uh, in for fourth, one, two, four, fourteen. That is a very in-depth look for the feature race at Shantin on Sunday at the Classic Cup. Let us find out now who the best bet for Paul Lally is. Yeah, I'm mean, going to go on the last uh, horse there, superb kid. Look, I, I really like the way he finished off strongly here. He had his opposition uh, covered and he meets him pretty similar in the weights as well. Uh, and uh, look, it, any sort of run he'll get, and I think he'll get a better run from Barry number 80, Drew 11 here, he's going to be very tough to beat. So he's a horse, he's very progressive, he's only had the five starts, and he's won and then run the second. So I think he's up to this grade. And the long shot will do the one we just talked about, Beauty Crescent. Hopefully he'll stay. Uh, he looked like he will, with the blinkers will come off, so I've given him every chance. And we'll do a play earlier in the day, race two, one for one for Wimcheater, Golden Darcy downgraded, and Sky Trust QQP 349. Yeah, best bet for me coming up uh, is race nine, number six, Noble Pursuit. Hugh Bowman, Casper Fowns, up in trip, good draw uh, from the 2,000 metres will suit him. And the long shot, race eight, number eight, Nervous Witness, new jockey this time in. Andrea Rizzani will be on board. Now, he's had a bit of an up and down career, I think it's fair to say, but 126 days off games. He's had a couple of trials, he's won both of them. Uh, the latest with Andrea in the saddle. He's drawn 12 down the straight course with the rail to run against. So he's not a bad horse fresh and hopefully he's over all these issues. I think he's good enough to win, hopefully at a price. And the play, race nine, numbers two, six and 12 for me. The best bet, Divas 12, goes up in distance. Zach Purton jumps on board. He's been running home really well over shorter trips recently. So race four, number 12, is the best. The long shot, stick with Simply Maverick. Damien Lane, who looks about 12 in that photo. He's a bit older now, but uh, he'll be in town to ride him. The play, race four, QQP 1, 11 and 12. On a great day's racing coming up at Shard 10. Nick, the diary is appearing on screen. Horse running this Sunday, runs in the Group 1 next Sunday, Galaxy Patch. He does indeed, yeah. It's an interesting angle into the race, but um, Pierre Ung is the leading trainer here. Paul, so he knows what he's doing. Yeah, exactly. Lights, camera, action, all set for Sunday. We are indeed. That has been Racing to Win. Big thanks to both Nick and Paul, also to Sam Blake, and to you too. And we'll see you for the first on Sunday at Shard 10 at 1 o'clock.